morning and welcome to St. Mark's Episcopal Church in New Canaan, Connecticut. We are so delighted that you are joining us here this morning for this celebration of Holy Eucharist and the preaching of the Word. I invite you to stay the length of the service today, for we have something special at the end, as we often do. And no, it's not our maestro playing his usual magical postlude. Today we have a video tribute for Syra Borsi, the retiring Director of Youth Ministries here at St. Mark's. I hope you'll stay for that. It is most dearing and most touching. Our opening hymn this morning is Sing Praise to God Who Reigns Above. God bless you and welcome. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and blessed, blessed be God's, God's kingdom, kingdom, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to your hearts are open. All desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 A reading from the book of Exodus. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered round Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us who shall go before us, as this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt. We do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. 
So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it in a mold, and cast an image of a calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people, whom you have brought up out of the land of Egypt, have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf, and have worshipped it, and sacrificed to it, and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone, so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them. And of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God, and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath. Change your mind. Do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster he had planned to bring on his people. The word, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 106. Hallelujah! Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. Who can declare the mighty acts of the Lord, or show forth all His praise? Happy are those who act with justice and always do what is right. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have for your people, and visit me with your saving help, that I may see the prosperity of your elect, and be glad with the gladness of your people, that I may glory with your inheritance. We have sinned as our forebears did. We have done wrong and dealt wickedly. Israel made a bull calf at Horeb and worshiped a molten image. And so they exchanged their glory for the image of an ox that feeds on grass. They forgot their savior who had done great things in Egypt, wonderful deeds in the land of Ham, and fearful things at the Red Sea. So he would have destroyed them had not Moses, his chosen, stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath from consuming them. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Eudoia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, 
whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable. If there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe, and he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise, Praise to, you, to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. To the glory of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. When my dear colleague and our friend Justin got slammed with the flu this past week, not the COVID flu, they both tested negative, he and Jewel, thanks be to God, we did what we do as a well-oiled clergy team. We shuffled the deck, and I took on his preaching assignment today and filled in for him at a wedding yesterday as the officiant. This is nothing Justin wouldn't do for me if the situation were reversed. Though, of course, it was disappointing for the wedding couple who had prepared with him as their priest and guide for the better part of the year. So having spent an intense couple of days poring over this strange and challenging gospel, once I got to the wedding yesterday, believe me, I half expected one of the parents of the bride or groom to single me out like the king does to that poor guest at the end of Jesus' parable, and say to me, how did you get in here? Well, Justin's and my switcheroo aside, it has been a tough year for weddings, with COVID-19 upending the best laid plans and couples having to cancel large guest lists and move ceremonies and receptions outdoors, rain or shine. To anyone listening who's been part of a wedding that got sabotaged by the pandemic this year, I'm genuinely sympathetic to your disappointment. But COVID-19 has nothing on Jesus' parable in Matthew when it comes to ruining a wedding. First, every person on the king's guest list turns the invitation down. It's one thing for a wedding couple to have to tell their guests they can no longer come to their wedding during a full-blown pandemic. It's another thing altogether to have everyone they know refuse to come in the first place. And when the king in the parable sends out messengers to his friends in the hope they'll reconsider, not only do they fail to change their minds, they dismiss the banquet as a non-event and kill the messengers. I think at this point I would postpone the wedding, wouldn't you? But Jesus has a much larger point to make in this parable. So he has the king go even further. He invites any and all who are passing by, good and bad alike, and even gives them clothes to wear. The party must go on because that is what the kingdom of heaven is like. 
It's like a banquet to which every person, good and bad, is invited, and all are offered something to wear as God's welcome guests. The divine feast is a running image throughout Hebrew and Christian scripture as a way to frame what God has in mind for humankind, a joyous party, a celebration of love for God's beloved. If only we will realize it, accept the invitation, and show up. But we doubt the lavishness of the feast, free and gracious, generous and egalitarian, whether we deserve it or not. Sometimes we sit more comfortably with a God who doles out what wicked people deserve, like the angry and and vengeful king. And I feel like that's why one of the classic interpretations of this parable has been a straight up allegory in which God is this violent king. At a glance, one can see the allegorical possibilities in the Hebrew prophets as God's messengers who get killed and God as their vengeful king, and so on. But throughout his life and teaching, Jesus represented an entirely different image of God than that of a vengeful king. So an allegorical approach breaks down for me in the parable's sheer violence. I don't believe that jibes with Jesus' lived embodiment of a persistently loving, forgiving, and merciful God who continually invites us to life's great banquet, and who would never hunt us down and kill us, even if we continually say no. Jesus is once again teaching through story, using hyperbolic, shocking imagery to grab his listeners' attention and to emphasize the gravity of his message, which is that the kingdom of heaven is like a king's wedding feast, and the good and bad alike are all invited. The passage says, many are called, but few are chosen. But isn't it also true, many are called, but few choose to come? As I was saying, scripture is shot through with the imagery of meals, the Exodus Passover meal, Sabbath meals, the marriage feast at Cana, the dinner party of the prodigal son, dinners at Pharisees' houses and with prostitutes and sinners, sharing bread with Jesus' disciples, feeding crowds on hillsides with loaves and fishes, the Last Supper, the meal at Emmaus, breakfast on the beach with the resurrected Christ, and not least of all, the Great Supper of the Lamb in the book of Revelation. In each and every New Testament case, the meals amount to a gracious invitation to come to the table with Christ and find healing and unity with one another. So in light of this recurring scriptural motif of feasting, I want to try on a different interpretation of this difficult parable. Jesus was ever and always operating on the level of the inner inner heart of human beings. He might have sparred with Pharisees and political powers, but he never set out to take his own place in a position of power, earthly power. He sought only to challenge his religious ruler's ability to see that God is freely at work in the world, unbounded by their purity codes and exclusionary power structures, doing the work of healing and restoring the created order back to its intended harmony and fruitfulness. In this vein, we might read this wedding feast parable as a metaphor for the ways in which we insist on remaining outside of the truly meaningful arena of life, when we don't take time to notice where God is working in us and in the world. This parable throws light on how we willfully miss out or dismiss the very biggest cosmic possibility of joy that's ours for the taking within us and around us all the time. We doubt that joy can be ours. In the words of the writer and priest Robert Ferrer Capon, Jesus' free grace, dying love, and unqualified acceptance might as well be a 15-foot crocodile the way we respond to it. We will sooner accept a God who we will be fed to than one we will be fed by. It takes a certain intentionality to see joy beyond the pain in our world and in our own lives when we are in pain. 
But that doesn't mean joy isn't there, flickering brightly beyond the shadows of our suffering. St. Paul, who was frequently arrested and tortured, was actually writing from prison when he said to the Philippians, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. To enter into joy like that, it takes a daily spiritual practice of attention and an intention of deep listening and careful watching with inner heart and inner eyes to recognize the energy of the divine presence pulsating throughout everything, transforming pain into life-giving possibility. Forget any equating God with this parable's king. The story is about the people, the would-be wedding guests, and their inability to see what they're missing. The characters in Jesus' parable are going off to work and tending to their many obligations, things we all have to do, but ignoring or making light of no less than a king's invitation. They kill the messenger, trying to invite them into something cosmically joyful. But God does not kill us and burn our cities when we refuse to listen. We are the ones who hurt one another trying to be right or to get ahead. We are the ones who sever relationships when we can't forgive or allow ourselves to be forgiven. We are the ones who divide and categorize people and things into good and bad, worthy and unworthy. We are the ones who exclude and kill and burn down cities. God is entirely outside of our violent ways. The possibility is always available to us to put aside our weapons and divisive ways, the mania and worry and fear that we wrap ourselves in and instead put on the wedding garment that is an awakened soul and come to the party where we find that peace that passes all understanding. Matthew's gospel begins with Emmanuel, God with us, and it ends with, Lo, I am with you always. And all throughout the middle, the sum of Jesus' teaching invites us into this deeper dimension of living that's like a wedding feast. Many are called to this party, but few choose to enter in. What keeps us from going deeper when there is untold joy to be had there, even in the midst of life's greatest pain? Many will choose to bob along downstream along the current of their life's pain or pleasure, or chase the rush of ego, like the busy farmer and merchant in the parable without stopping to think or feel beyond what can be quantified or monetized. And that's what it means to decline the invitation, to live out the deeper dimensions of our humanity and miss the real party. The mystics say suffering can be our greatest teacher, but it is hard to accept teaching from pain caused by people or situations or our own mistakes. We naturally see pain as an unwelcome guest. We will lock it away in a closet or slam the door on it out of fear or anger or a dogged commitment to the reptilian response of fight or flight. The pain that is not transformed is transmitted, as Richard Rohr famously said. The meaning of life is found in aligning ourselves, our whole selves, with whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, as St. Paul writes. If there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things and the God of peace will be with you. Here is the good news. There is always truth and honor and justice to be found in the world or delivered to the world. There are always pure and pleasing and commendable things and people on which to train our attention and who teach us to see God at work in the world. We lack only the eyes to see and the ears to hear and the trust to respond. We must not take lightly the urgent invitation to let our souls awaken and come to this party that is the kingdom of heaven. It is already underway, 
It is here and it is now. And the world desperately needs us to go there. We are all invited. The good and the bad in all of us is invited. Take the invitation seriously and don't forget to RSVP. Let us proclaim our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That, that we, we all, all may be, be one. one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your, that your name, name may be glorified by all people. people. We pray for all bishops, priests, deacons, and lay ministers. That, that they, they may, may be faithful, faithful ministers, ministers of, of your word and, and sacraments. sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That, that there, there may, may be justice, justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That, that our works may find, find favor, favor in your sight. sight. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. Especially for the marriage of Catherine Jacobson and Joseph Wilcox and for the marriage of Colleen Elise Irel and William Whitfield Barnwell, my nephew, yesterday. We thank you also, Lord, for the many ministries of Syra Borsi, and particularly this day for her work with the youth of our parish and community. As Syra has sheltered and deepened their joy and wonder through the gift of unconditional love, we pray you to increase her joy by the new space for wonder and service you have opened up before her. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and, and praise, praise your name, name forever, forever and ever. ever. We remember all those commended to our community for prayer, especially for the President and First Lady and for all those in the White House and government and across the country who have been infected by this virus and also for those for whom we've been asked to pray, Anne, Avery, Bobby, Bob Short, Brian, Clara, Courtney, Dave, David, Diane, Ellie, Evelyn, Florence, Gordon, Grace, Harry, Henry, Herrick, Jamie, Jane, Jean, Jeff, Jen, Jim, John, Karen, Kathy, Kathy Lynn, Kay, Lana, Lori, Leora, Lou, Lisa, Lucy, Marjorie, Megan, Mercedes, Molly, Morgan, Nancy, Nikki, Owen, Preeti, Ray, Rolla Lane, Richard, Ruth, Sailor, 
Sean, Sophia, Tim, Vivian, William, and Winston. Have compassion on all those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that, that they, they may, may be, be delivered, delivered from, from their, their distress. distress. We pray for all who have died, especially Marcy Eidelberg, longtime parishioner, Jim Frederick, friend of Dave and Laura Watt, Jane Hildebrand, friend of Ned Tipton, Ruth Flom Kelly, sister-in-law of Jean Ganusi, and we remember especially Robert Ayers Killifer, late husband of Eloise Killifer, who died 20 years ago today. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let, Let light, light perpetual, perpetual shine, shine upon them. them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May, May we, we also, also come, come to share, share in your, your heavenly, heavenly kingdom. kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to we give glory, a Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have sinned against you in thought, thought word, and deed, by, by what, what we have, have done, done and by, by what, what we have, have left undone. undone. We, we have, have not, not loved, loved you with all our whole heart. We have, have not loved, loved our neighbors as ourselves. We, we are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, with, you. with you. Wherever you are, please reach out as a sign of peace to someone in your life. Well, good morning again. As I said at the outset, what a delight it is for us to have you with us today. We honor your time and are always, always so appreciative. If there's anything we can do for you, we hope that you will reach out to us, whether or not it is on the phone or by uh, typing into your computer. Uh, we have a great desire to be a community of love in Christ. I just want you to know a few things about our life together. Uh, as I mentioned at the outset of the service, uh, today we are celebrating the ministry of Syra Borsi, as you heard so beautifully in the prayers. The nine o'clock service outside, uh, we gave Syra a vestry commendation and a beautiful witness by Mark Thorsheim of the ministry that Syra has had with the youth of our parish over the past, it says decade, but it's really 12 years. Uh, in addition, what I would really love it is if you would hang on for just a moment uh, at the end of our service uh, and after the closing hymn to hear and to see a wonderful tribute to Syrah. And there you'll see Josh Hill and Taylor Flowers, Julia Denai and Katie Connor and Lila Dan have a word about Syrah and the impact they have made, that she has made on their lives. I want to say also thank you to Stan and Holly March and to Caroline Greer uh, for their con contributions this morning reading the youth ministry of the parish and the ministry of the parish continues to roll right along in this hybrid and unusual days of uh, the pandemic. Our website is chock full of ministry. Uh, please visit it if there's things that we can do for you there. I note in particular that Jewel, uh, Father Justin's wife, uh, uh, Dr. J, as uh, affectionately known by us, uh, Jewel has a PhD in philosophy and she is going to be offering a class and a course uh, and an online webinar it is the three Tuesdays of October plus the first Tuesday in November, Election Day. It is Listen, Learn, and Love, How to Disagree Well in a Polarized World. This was what Jules, a PhD dissertation was about, and her offering to the greater community couldn't be more timely. If you would like to participate in this, it's from 6 to 6.45 before the dinner hour. Uh, please reach out to us on our website, and we will send you all the necessary links. Uh, Again, as I say every Sunday, so 
grateful to all of you who support St. Mark's Episcopal Church uh, with your financial gifts. It is the gas that makes the engine go. Holy Communion follows, set your heart upon the Lord and the Lord will bring you gifts. Now walk in love as Christ has loved us and given himself an offering and sacrifice to God. come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them, them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give, give God, God thanks and, and praise. praise. Yes, it is a right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will, will come again. again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. And sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, for by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. 
Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily, daily bread, and forgive us our, our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. us. And, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver, deliver us from evil. For, for thine, thine is the kingdom, the kingdom and, and the power and the glory, and the glory forever, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, us let us keep, keep the, feast. the feast. Alleluia. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed upon him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you, as, as faithful, faithful witnesses of Christ, Christ our, our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Now go and make disciples who live a deeper life in Christ, a more holy communion with one another, and a greater love for the world. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
Hey St. Mark's, it's me, Josh Hill, and I am so happy to uh, have been asked to be here today to celebrate Cyra Borsi. Um, I cannot, I cannot, I don't know where to begin, I can't overstate the impact that Cyra had, um, not only on the youth group during my time at St. Mark's, but um, just on me as a person. She was a, a true partner in ministry with me, a true leader in ministry for me, and in many, many ways, Saira helped me really uh, feel confident in my own calling to the priesthood. Um, I, I, I don't know where to start. Saira and I went on a drive, um, <laughs> and I remember being in, in her car. I said, hey, can, can, can you drive? I don't think I have any gas. And of course, she said, of course I can drive. And, and like, like the way that she, uh, I would come to learn was, was giving of her time and of her resources and of her enthusiasm openly and freely. And we went on this drive and I had just been hired and I was trying to figure out how to build a program and I had all these huge visions and things I wanted to do and aspirations and, and I said to Siren, I was like, I was trying to share some of these ideas with her and I said, I, I just don't know how I'm going to do all of this. And Sara said, you don't have to do all of this. That's what I'm here for. And I remember feeling like, oh yeah, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> Why do I feel like I have to do all of this? Uh, Sara said, listen, I'm going to be part of this. I'm going to help you and we're going to be a team. And she meant it, and she was there every Sunday. She was there in my office every Wednesday as we planned for Sunday, as we spent half the time uh, being planful and the other half the time uh, coming up with hilarious ideas that should never be tried at youth group. And we just developed a bond and a friendship and a trust in ministry. And so, Sarah, my sister in Christ, I am so grateful for you, for the faithfulness that you showed to your calling, for the leadership that uh, you showed me and for the ways that your, your energy and enthusiasm and your generosity have impacted um, now a decade of, of young people at St. Mark's as they go out into the world to live a deeper life in Christ and a greater love for the world and a more holy communion with one another. Even though I said that all out of order, I want you guys to know that that's, that's still up here and it's, it's still in here. So I love you guys, and I love you, Syrah. God bless you. Thank you so much. Hi, Syrah. It's me. Uh, I'm wishing you congratulations and the best of luck with whatever comes next for you and your family. I know that you guys are going to make the best of it, and I can't wait to hear about it. 
um, just here to share one of my favorite memories of us, which would be the Star Wars marathon. I remember sitting in the youth room for like 48 hours straight, just eating junk food and watching the entire Star Wars series up until The Force Awakens. And it was just a lot of fun, you know, just hanging out and, you know, getting to know each other a lot more, which was just incredible. Um, again, congratulations. Wish you the best of luck. I can't wait to hear about it. So see you later. Hi, Syra. Congratulations. Thank you so much for everything you've done all these years, all the reunion dinners, the mission trips, every Sunday that you ran youth group, especially while transitions happened. You always kept things feeling normal and exciting and really just always being there, always checking in on us, even when we were at college. Your care packages always meant so much and always made that week so exciting and really helps get you through all the candy and the Halloween gifts. And really, you've just been so amazing and I'm so lucky to have known you. And I wish you the best of luck on your new endeavors and I can't wait to still catch up whenever I come home. Syra, I don't even know where to begin. You have done the absolute most amazing things for this youth group and this church overall. I am so blessed that during our craziness of high school and even middle school, when we were going through so many different youth pastors, you've just always stepped up and showed us exactly what it is to be amazing. You have taught me more than I could ever imagine. You've been there for me through some of the hardest moments of my entire life and some of the best. I am just so blessed to have known and to know you and for you just always being there for absolutely everyone and having the most amazing heart ever. Thank you so much for everything. And I absolutely love and miss you so much and I hope I'll see you sometime soon. Syra, I love you so much, and I'm so happy that you're in my life. I will never, ever, 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 ever forget how wonderful you made our mission trips, our little group meetings, um, just youth Friday nights, that kind of thing. I'm so happy that you're in all of our lives and you brighten everyone's day all the time. I love you so much and I wish you all the luck on your next adventure.